The new Aperture Infini Bar Light may sound like a Vegas cocktail experience mixed with Buzz Lightyear cosplay, but it's actually a new series of DMX capable full color LED pixel bars that contain internal batteries and are infinitely linkable. The Infini Bar Light is jam packed with other pro focus features like frequency selection to avoid flicker and hundreds of gel presets. If you liked connector sets as a child, you're gonna like these fixtures a lot. Hi, I'm Graham Mailer Sheldon, and there's much to discuss in my review of the Infini Bar. Let's dive in. So, first impressions. As the name suggests, the Infini Bar is more of a bar shape than the popular tube design that we've seen from other brands like Astera, Quasar Science, and even Aperture itself in the form of their Ameren tube lights. The Infini Bar is also infinitely modular in the sense that by using Aperture's connectors, you can make a variety of shapes. As long as you're mindful of how the connectors are powered, you can create long lengths by joining different pieces together. More on that later. For this review, I was sent three Infini Bars in the currently available lengths of one foot, two foot, and four feet. Lights are named for short PB3, PB6, and PB12. Each bar comes in a smartly designed, semi-rigid travel case that includes the following. 9.8 foot DC power adapter, 4.9 foot AC locking power cable, clamp to baby pin adapter, magnetic spacers times two, straight connector, compatible hex wrench, and as of publishing, I did not have access to the new $99 grid accessory, softbox, or to the upcoming eight light kit that will include eight PB12 four foot fixtures in a single hard case. Previously, there have been attempts in the market to create connectable and modular lengths of LED fixtures. The Infini Bar design is vaguely reminiscent of the now discontinued specular fixtures from Spiffy Gear. But right out of the gate, the Infini Bar fixes many design quibbles I had with the specular line. Few brands also make connectable LED lengths designed primarily for architectural lighting but they don't have high enough CRI, TLCI, or SSI scores for me to feel comfortable putting them anywhere near people or camera sensors for that matter. Flicker at various shutter speeds is also a common problem for LED lights not designed with filmmakers in mind. So for now, the Infini Bar stands alone as a filmmaker-friendly connectable fixture, and at first glance, there are many good design ideas on display here. A few of my favorites out of the gate are, multiple mounting options, magnetic quarter 20 baby pin, connectors with pass-through AC power, the connectors are solid with no gaps between bars, internal battery with 120 minutes of life, sometimes you just can't hide a cable, 24 individual pixels per foot, Lumen Radio CRMX, Citus Link, DMX RDM using a USB-C dongle that isn't included. The inclusion of Lumen Radio CRMX makes the Infini Bar an Aperture product and not a more prosumer focused Ameren product. It also seems there is less reliance on plastic with the aluminum housing design of the Infini Bar when compared to some of the more plasticky Ameren products. If there's a weak point on the bar in terms of taking an impact, it would be the plastic frosted diffusion panel that covers the LEDs. But thankfully, that should be a fairly inexpensive piece to replace in case of damage. I don't see an IP rating mentioned in the aperture materials, so the Infini Bar wouldn't be the fixture to get near water or particles like sand or machine dust. Okay, time to go hands-on with a couple of Infini Bars here. So this is the one foot, this is the two foot, and right now you can see we're powering from wall power, but internal batteries. So I just pulled out the barrel connector. I wish it was a Limo connector. It's not, you can't have everything. There you go. So now we're powering off of the wall. Love internal batteries. I've already gone ahead and put one of those straight connector pieces that's included in the kit. This is, uh, this would be for the one foot, this kind of you know, you could drop that, it would be okay. You just can't crush this with gigantic Pelican cases. So it's okay for an owner operator, a little sketchy maybe on a gigantic grip truck filled with combo stands, etc. So here's that straight connector piece. And right now it's connected to the C stands using the baby pin connector. Let's talk about the baby pin connector out of the gate here. So I'm gonna turn this around. 
So I think you would assume you slide the baby pin on from the sides. That's actually not the case. It's a center mount. Aperture tells me that's for safety reasons to prevent it from sliding off the sides. So a little counterintuitive, but I get it. It's a good safety reason. I don't mind that at all. So I'll take off the baby pin. And now we're going to connect the one foot to the two foot here on my right. So if I can just spin this around. So Aperture includes the correct Allen key in the set, which I really like. They have a rich tradition of including the stuff you need in the kit. And now I'm simply tightening that straight connector piece. Again, you know, you get the straight connector piece. There's a multi connector set that has more goodies in it. You can make star shapes, you can make squares, you know, things like that, right angled pieces, but straight connector works in a lot of situations. So right now we're actually charging off of wall power. And the reason is in that straight connector piece, it has pass through power. This is one of the huge draws of the infinity bar is the seamless look right here. You can see on camera, there's a tiny, tiny little gap, but probably not perceptible from uh, where the camera is right there. You can see on the outside and then of course, built in battery. Okay. Magnets built right into the back, which I love. For some reason, the two foot and the four foot versions have these guys that help extend it away from, you can see this, they slide in and then they live right here, extending the magnet out a little bit from that ridge on the back. Uh, I'm not sure why that is. That might be a weight concern maybe that Aperture had and they thought, okay, we need kind of a beefier surface here uh, when it, if you're gonna use the magnet mount. Um, a lot of quarter 20 options. You can see quarter 20s on the end. Interestingly, no quarter 20 mounts on the sides, something to keep in mind, but at, at either end. And then, yeah, you could, you could theoretically go into one of these uh, if you needed to as well. So yeah, quarter 20 options and magnet options and a baby pin options. Finally, so many different ways to mount you know, kind of differently shaped lights. That's such a headache I had for so many years before we started getting all those great T12 adapters for tube lights. But something that Aperture's thought about right out of the gate here, which I appreciate. So, who is the Infinity Bar meant for? As a director of photography and CineD contributor, I spend a lot of time thinking about lighting and what's coming next and why. That said, I would not have guessed the Infinity Bar series was next on Aperture's plate. Maybe I just didn't know I needed an Infinity Bar, and there are several reasons for this. For one, I've had the pleasure of working on a few stage shows like a RuPaul spinoff for Paramount Plus and several College Humor projects over the years like Game Changer S5 and Dimension 20 S15. In those projects, we heavily relied on background accent lighting elements for which the Infinity Bar series would have been useful. The placement of these types of lights tends to be a collaboration between the production designer and the cinematographer. In Dimension 20, for example, we used LED ribbon with frosted plastic coverings in the main table that are almost identical in light quality emitted, but not feature set, of course, to the Infinity Bar LED pixel bars. On Game Changer, we had LED ribbon ringing the entire top portion of the rear wall of the set. Should I immediately begin working with the production designer to swap all accent lighting for Infinity Bars on shows like this? It depends. The first consideration has to be price. The Infinity Bar comes in three lengths, one foot, two foot, and four feet, and it's priced at $299, $479, and $639 US dollars, respectively. Building a stage set using only Infinity Bars with the necessary dimensions would be prohibitively expensive in most cases. The best solution would be a combination of Ameren SM5C light strips, if we're keeping things within the brand, and using Infinity Bars only in key set elements, like say, the main host table or in an entryway. Aperture has provided the tools to configure the Infini Bar into a variety of shapes. Linking Infini Bars together is easy, and the connection held together by multiple hex screws is solid enough that I'm not afraid of individual bars breaking free and hurting crew members. 
You want to use steel safety chains when placing anything above people, of course. Also, it's important to keep in mind that a single DC power adapter can only power a certain number of infinity bars linked together in a chain. My mind again drifts back to the fact you'll need to purchase many, many infinity bars to make meaningful shapes to cover the background of a 16 by 9 frame on a music video. For that reason, the infinity bar, especially the 8 light kit, may become a popular rental item in major markets. Still, the cost for meaningful amounts of infinity bars could become prohibitive for individual owner operators. Okay, let's talk the tube shape versus the bar shape. I found the one foot infinity bar works well as a practical in-shot element on a modern set. For instance, the size fits perfectly above a door frame at the end of a hallway. Wrapped with a bit of diffusion or using the upcoming $69 softbox for the one foot infinity bar, it would even work well as a steady cam or gimbal mounted camera top light for, say, long oneers. Add the grid accessory to the two foot or four foot bar, and you have a capable hair light mounted to a C stand using the included baby pin accessory. Why not a tube for any of the above use cases? Good question. The real strength of the infinity bar is in the clean, seamless look you can create by adding mini bars together. The other core strength is the smoothness of the transitions between so many pixels when using any of the more flashy built-in effects like Pixel Chase. More pixels just make movement-heavy effects like that look better on camera. However, if you've been in the industry a while, you've likely invested in some type of tube-shaped light already that has at least some number of pixels built in. If you can tell I'm experiencing a bit of a conflict between the tube or bar shape, it's because I am. The point is, if you're sitting on several grand in tube lights already, is the seamless look of the linked infinity bars or clean pixel transitions enough to justify a significant investment in both tube lighting and infinity bars? I don't know. The market will decide on that point, and personally, I'm not sure. Okay, now to connectivity and control. Of course, you can always use the rear panel for controlling the infinity bar, although oddly, I prefer the screen and cleaner UI design of the cheaper Ameren P24C to the Infinity Bar personally. For me, I'm most often using Bluetooth control or another member of my team is using some flavor of DMX. Back to Bluetooth though. I know I've discussed Citus Link in the past, but with constant updates on Aperture's light control app, things just keep getting better and better. Pairing for the first time is simple. You can see the infinity bar pop up quickly in the app by clicking Bluetooth reset on the fixture itself. 24 pixels per square foot is an impressive amount of individually mapped pixels, and the Citus Link app makes controlling those pixels easy. Picking a color, having each pixel fade in or out or chase or flash faster or slower, all are possible with the click of a few buttons in the Bluetooth app available on iOS or Android. The Citus Link app allows you to go as in-depth into creating an effect as you want to, or have time for. Most of the time, you will simply need to select one of the pre-built effects like Party 2, for example, and edit that effect to fit the feel of the piece you're making. This can be done in the space of a few minutes. How many times will you drift away from the more standard gel, white, or color modes into the arguably more fun music FX or pixel FX modes, making use of the many, many pixels at your disposal? That depends on the type of work you do. If you aren't often in the position of building complicated lighting effects, you may not be working on everything everywhere all at once. Or if you mostly work in CCT mode between 2000 Kelvin and 10,000 Kelvin, then there may be cheaper tube-based or pre-baked common industry digital gel solutions. Despite not being a gaffer or lighting designer, I've worked with a variety of lighting manufacturer apps. After a rocky start, the Citus app has grown to become one of the best in the business, in my opinion. The barrier is also very low to get started and to begin playing around with the different looks in your spare time. You'll find all that at-home experimentation a ton of fun. Okay, now to some final thoughts. 
Aperture's Infini Bar series is an impressive design swing for a brand that's taking more and more big swings these days after building quality staple fixtures such as the Lightstorm 1200D Pro or 600C Pro or the Nova. The Infini Bar's main draw is the blending design, and that's the significant benefit of this fixture series in my opinion. If you have already invested heavily in another tube light or the Ameren T4C, T2C, or have the upcoming Ameren P24C on pre-order, ask yourself if you need that seamless look of the Infini Bar. It might be a rental only item for you and that's okay. On the other hand, entertainment venues, rental houses, stages, LED volume spaces, or turnkey studios would be well served by having an in-house plethora of Infini Bar options that filmmakers can use on an a la carte basis. I see these fixtures as being very popular in that capacity. And if the majority of your work is in the music or event space, then the Infini Bar may also make solid purchase sense for you. There you have it. That's my review of the Infini Bar. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Rev Studio in San Diego for their help with this review. Go to RevStudioSD.com for more info on how to book their beautiful studio space.